Good afternoon, everybody. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Today, we are going to be looking at a complete breakdown of Amazon FBA fees. This is a quite an in-depth video. So strap in because we're going to be heading onto the computer in a second. I'm going to take you through a wicked keynote presentation. Get pen and paper at the ready. Now, if you're interested in this sort of content, make sure you are subscribed with those little notifications turned on. Let's get into the video straight away. <laughs> Welcome if you're new here, welcome back if you're not. My name is Johnny Bradley, I'm founder of the Seller Pro Academy where we help ordinary people create extraordinary things, just one product at a time. So today I've actually got a, a little treat for you guys and if you're interested in selling on Amazon, you need to understand the cost to selling on Amazon because it's not so much just like, oh, you buy your stock and you need your branding, your logos and all that sort of stuff. There's loads of costs that are not hidden, but they're just, you don't really know unless you know, okay? So I'm gonna take you through a bunch of uh, fees today, all the little breakdowns of the things that you may or may not need to spend money on, uh, particularly with actually with Amazon themselves. So uh, what I've got is a, a keynote presentation and this is taken from the Seller Pro Academy. So you're getting some elite access to this, some exclusive access. Now this video actually isn't live in the Academy. I've been working on a, a, a very large redesign and uh, this is a little sneak peek. So if you like this sort of stuff, then make sure you let me know, okay? So let's jump onto the computer straight away. So just to bear in mind, some of this stuff is obviously gonna be related to the course and not relevant to you guys. When I talk about download the PDF, then well, you ain't gonna be able to download it, but I have got loads of links where you can go and find the same information. So um, this is particularly in the sourcing and negotiation section. So because when you're sourcing and you're negotiating your product, you need to actually know how much it's going to cost you to fulfill and all those sorts of little costs that you're gonna find out. So that's why we do it in this section, okay? So this is an Amazon fees, a complete breakdown. So by the end of this lesson, by the end of this video, you're gonna be able to distinguish between the different seller fee types and the relevant costs associated with them, okay? Why do you need to know this? Selling on Amazon isn't just about how much that you're making, it's equally how much you're spending because that really makes a difference on how much money you're able to make, how much profit you're, you're gonna be able to make. And the last thing that you want is you think you've worked out all your costs and then you realize, oh, actually there's this other cost that I had no idea about because you don't know what you don't know, right? It's unconscious ignorance, you, un, unconscious ignorance. You don't know what you don't know. And this is a little disclaimer for you guys. Obviously this is on YouTube. So uh, all of this is subject to change. Amazon often change things without any notice or without sometimes even an email or a heads up. But for the official guidance, always visit Amazon directly. And um, there will be links provided in here and I'll, I'll put them in the description as well. There is no PDF attached because well, we can't. So the first thing we're gonna uh, look at uh, is just a little note on VAT, okay? So I'm in the UK and in the UK, we have something called VAT, value added tax. And if you're not in the UK, you may not have this, but it's really important to mention that all the fees that I'm looking at today, so anytime I mention a price, uh, in pounds, that is, then they're going to be uh, VAT exclusive, which means that there's VAT needs to be added on top. Okay, so it means there's no VAT on these numbers. For example, okay, if I say something is 20 pounds, then 20 times 1.2, VAT is 20%, that'll give you 24 pounds. Okay, so VAT is 24 minus 20, which is four pounds, right? So just make sure you understand these. When Amazon in the UK and other VAT kind of countries, um, whenever they talk about costs, they always give VAT exclusive prices. So this is something you need to work out um, when you're actually doing these, these calculations yourself is like, remember, VAT, okay? So multiply by 1.2, that's really easy. Um, do you have to pay VAT, okay? Uh, everyone pays VAT if you're using a market marketplace that charges VAT, okay? So the United Kingdom, Germany, for example, both of these countries charge VAT, they have VAT. Just like when you go to a shop, right, and you buy something from a shop, then you're paying VAT on that product, okay? So Amazon works in the same way, they have a product or service, they're selling it, and they have to charge you VAT. So um, don't get confused with being VAT registered because paying VAT and charging your customers VAT are kind of two separate things. So don't get bogged down in that, just understand it doesn't matter if you're VAT registered, you're still paying VAT for kind of buying these goods and services or buying these services particularly from Amazon. 
So the first thing we want to look at is your membership fee. Okay, so there's two options for a membership fee, uh, fee a personal plan, and you have a professional plan. The personal plan, as you can see here, is zero pounds. Okay, you do have a flat rate of 75 pence per unit sold, plus any additional fees that we're going to go into later, which which may or may not be um, may or may or, may or may not occur with your particular product. But there's always a flat rate of 75 pence. This is different in different countries. In the US, it might, I think it's like a dollar or something like that. Um, but yeah, 75 pence. If you sell a product, you're going to be paying Amazon a minimum of 75 pence. This is limited though to only 35 units sold per month. So obviously, if you're selling more than 35 units, you need to be on a professional plan. So really, you can't sell a lot. Okay, you really can't sell a lot. The next one is your professional plan. And this is a monthly fee of 25 pounds plus VAT. Remember that, so it's 30 pounds, 25 times 1.2 is 30. You don't have any selling limits, okay? So you can sell 3,000 units a month, if you, if, or a day if you really want to. Um, but also the other thing to be aware of is that you can move from a personal to a professional plan um, at pretty much any time, okay? So if you do wanna set up on a personal plan and then move it to a professional one, then you can absolutely do that. However, um, there are some common questions that I get because do you need a personal plan? Do you need a professional plan? I would say personally, if you're going to be selling more than 35 units and you know you are, if you're doing like private labeling or whatever you're doing, you're doing online arbitrage, anything that you think, okay, I need to sell more than 35 units a month, just go for a professional plan and you might as well do it. You might be thinking, well, what if I don't use it for a month or two? Uh, and that's perfectly fine. If you don't want to use it for a month or two, what I found is if you contact seller support and say, I haven't used my account and they can obviously go in and look, you know, you might not have anything listed, you might not have sold anything, go in and say, hey, would you mind if you, you know, could you reimburse me? Um, for those months that I haven't used it, most of the time, then they just approve it and they just say, yeah, that's absolutely fine. Um, we'll refund you that, okay? Um, it's not, I don't think it's something that they kind of actively put out there, but anyone that I've said, hey, just go and contact seller support, they've always been able to get their money back if you haven't used the service. So um, don't worry too much about that, but you will have to pay it up, you know, upfront at the beginning of every, every month. The next thing is gonna be your FBA fee, okay? So, FBA fulfillment by Amazon is the cost of Amazon to pick, pack, and uh, post your orders to the customers. It's worked out based on the size and the weight of your products, okay? And something that is really important as well is that the FBA fees are different if you if you sell through Amazon or if you sell through something called multi-channel fulfillment. So let me just give you an example of how that works. Multi-channel fulfillment is if you have your own website, let's say if you're using Shopify or ClickFunnels or, or Wix or whatever, Squarespace, and you have your product on there, you take the money from the customer. And then what happens is there's a little integration that goes in on the background, on the on the, the background, I guess, goes on in the background, which says, okay, this customer's just bought this, here's their address. It sends the information to Amazon. Amazon go, okay, cool, we'll send that product to that customer in like an Amazon box. But the customer has never visited Amazon, right? They don't know that it's coming from Amazon. So that's called multi-channel fulfillment and the fees are a little bit different for multi-channel fulfillment. Um, it works out, pretty much the same as your FBA fee and another fee um, called your selling fee. It works out about the same amounts. So Amazon basically still still make money. Um, but just be aware your FBA fees will be a little bit different if you sell directly through your own your own website. Okay, so um, like I said, there's, there's two things that make up the FBA fee, right? And it's to do with sizing. So there's two sizes, standard size or two main sizes, standard size and oversized. So I've taken this directly from Amazon because guys, like I said at the beginning, always take your guidance directly from Amazon. Again, this is subject to change. There's a reference down there where I got it. I'm also gonna put that link down in the description, okay? I'm just gonna read this out directly from Amazon. We define this as a packaged unit that is 12 kilograms or less in weight, okay? 12 kilograms or less, good. 45 centimeters or less on its longest side, however big that is, 34 centimeters or less on its medium size and 26 centimeters or less on its shortest size. So that gives you dimensions. So if, for example, yours is 44 centimeters long, but it's 35 centimeters on its middle size, then it's gonna be uh, too big, okay? It's gonna be too big for standard size. A unit exceeding any of these becomes oversized, right? So if any unit exceeds any of these things, 12 kilograms and any of these lengths, widths, uh, depths, whatever, it becomes oversized. FBA bro program is not available to anything over 30 kilograms as weight, which is pretty heavy. Okay, so also in the standard size, you have uh, small and light options. So if it's less than nine pounds, sold for less than nine pounds, uh, weighs less than or equal to 250 grams, including your packaging, and have dimensions less than or equal to 30 by 22 by 2.4 centimeters, so quite thin, okay? Then, um, unless that's supposed to be 24. Hmm, I'll, I'll double check that. I will double check that, that might be a mistake. But no, that should be right. So we're thinking like books, letters, DVDs, that sort of stuff, okay? I'm pretty sure that's correct. And less than nine pounds. 
very important okay so if you want that information direct because i don't know when you're going to be watching this video please go to that link if you just search in fba fees by amazon it's their main page it's very very easy you scroll down all the information is on one page okay so those are the resources the direct link is uh, amazon.co.uk forward slash services forward slash fulfillment dash buy dash amazon dash pricing okay super easy also you can go to fba calculator if you go into google type in fba calculator for the country that you're in and it'll bring up the one that is relative for you it's called the profitability calculator you put in the price of the product you put in your 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 cost of the product and it'll spit out all the answers for you it'll spit out the FBA fee and everything like that. Um, really, really cool piece of software. But if you want to do it yourself, then you can if you want to by getting the details from that direct link at the top. So the next one is referral fee, okay? We love a good old referral fee. So any, anytime you, you sell a product on Amazon, you basically owe Amazon a commission for doing so. The fee goes up to 15% for pretty much most categories, except for one, which is Amazon Electronics. So you're thinking like your Amazon Echoes, that sort of stuff. Um, is it called Amazon Echo? I think it is. And that's 45%, a huge amount. But most of them go up to 15% of the, the, the sale price, like the, the sales price of the actual product. So if you sell for 20 pounds, it's gonna be 15% of 20 pounds, okay, three pounds. So the charge is associated with the total sales value. That's really important. Okay, so here's an example of that. A computer accessory department has a 12% referral fee. If a product sells for 20 pounds, the fee is gonna be 20 times 0.12. That'll give you 12% then uh, that's £2.40 referral fee, okay? There's also a minimum charge. So if the sale price is lower than the minimum, you have to always pay the minimum charge, okay? So in this case, the minimum you could pay for the fulfillment fee is 25 pence. That's the absolute minimum. I believe in the US, that's $1, okay? So a little bit more in the US, but in the UK, for some reason, they're nice to us and they make that 25 pence, which means that if this £2.40 referral fee was, you know, was, let's say the product sold for £2, that's not right. Is that right? Two pounds, 10 pounds, two pounds. I say two pounds, then the referral fee would be 24 pence. Um, and in which case it would, they would charge you the minimum, which is 25 pence. Please someone check my math on that. <laughs> and the link where I got that, all this information is down there as well. So here's another example, a little bit of a different example because health and personal care department has two different referral fees. One is 8% on items under 10 pounds, but over 10 pounds, it's actually 15%. So you have to do some careful, quick math on this, where if a product sells for nine pound 50, then uh, you know that's 8%, which is 76 pence referral fee. But if it sells for 10 pounds and 25 pence or 10.50, it actually might be cheaper for you to sell it at nine pound 50 or nine pound 99, right? Because the referral fee is gonna be more, which will then actually just take away some of that money. So it might be better for you to get rank, BSR, all that sort of stuff, is to actually lower the price so that you don't have to pay the extra uh, 7%, that's not right, so yeah, extra 7% referral fee. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, next thing is gonna be storage fees. Woo! Storage fees can be quite complicated, so I'll try and take this one a little bit slower. Every product has a monthly storage fee. So this is, um, you know, if you have a whole bunch of products at Amazon, then you're gonna be paying for that space, right? You're basically like renting that space in the Amazon warehouse, okay? And that's obviously if you're using the FBA program. They charge you per one cubic foot. That's how they work it out, not per cubic meter, it's per cubic foot. So. Prices do also depend on the time of year. So let's look at that very, very quickly. This is again taken directly from Amazon. So this is subject to change. At the top, we have standard size and the bottom we have oversized. So on the left-hand side, you can see clothing, shoes, and bags have a different fee breakdown to every other category, right? Um, why, I'm not entirely sure, but it's just a lot cheaper. So if you look here, January to September for clothing, shoes, and bags is 39 pence per cubic foot. In October to December, which is obviously because it's kind of Christmas where there's a lot more stock that needs to be in the warehouse. They try and incentivize you to not keep as much stock, right? And and not be completely overloaded and overstocked unless you don't need to be. So they put the price up and it's 55 pence per cubic foot. Uh, all other categories, 65 pence, 91 pence. Oversize, as you can see here, uh, it's actually a little bit less, which is interesting. So January to September, 45 pence, October to December, 63 pence per cubic foot. Okay, you can get all this information from Amazon directly. Again, this sometimes changes, so just be aware of any of those changes. So this is how you calculate it. Feel free to screenshot this, write it down. Um, it should be fairly easy to work out once you understand it. So the first thing is we need our product dimension in inches. Um, quite often we will use centimeters, particularly in the UK. And actually on Amazon, they use centimeters pretty much most of the time, except for this calculation. So first of all, take centimeters, 
change it into inches, right? Then you'll have, let's say this, this bogus product of five inches by three inches by three inches. That's our product in its packaging. What you need to do is first of all, calculate how many cubic inches that product takes up. And all you do is you multiply them together. It's very, very easy to do that. So five times three times three, which is 45 cubic inches. Okay, that's the volume that that takes up. But Amazon worked this out, works this out in cubic feet. So we need to then convert cubic inches to cubic feet. Feet. To work this out in cubic feet, all you need to do is divide that number 45 by 1728. Why 1728? Well, that's one cubic foot in cubic inches, right? Um, so the way we got that is instead of doing five times three times three, we did 12 times 12 times 12 because one foot is 12 inches. And if it was 12 by 12 by 12, we times them together and then we work out how many cubic inches it is, which is 1728. So we do 45 divided by 1,728, which equals a very long uh, number, 0 0.02604, right? whatever yours turns out to be. Round that to two decimal places, so 0 0.03 uh, cubic feet. So then you know that your product takes up 0 0.03 cubic feet um, of space, of volume per product. So then we take the storage fee that we know from the previous slide. Okay, and let's say it's January to September, and it happens to be in, I don't know, toys and games or whatever it may be, uh, we know that the price is 65 pence per cubic foot. So we do our one, which is 0 0.03 times 0 0.65 equals 0 0.195. Again, round that to two decimal places. So it's 20 pence per unit per month. Okay. So I know that may look like a lot, but it's quite straightforward when you know how to do it. Work out your, your product in cubic inches, then work that out in cubic feet, and then times that cubic feet number by the cost, the storage cost per cubic foot per month, and then you have how much your unit will cost, right? So that nice and easy to work out. Ish. <clears throat> so the next one is we have is long-term storage fee. So it's a little bit different because to in Amazon to incentivize you not keeping a bunch of stock. Uh, in the warehouses that aren't selling, then they're saying, okay, cool. If that happens, we're going to charge you a load more money, right? So if your inventory has aged more than 365 days, that's when long, long-term long storage fees are going to be applied on a monthly basis per product, okay? So um, the monthly storage fee for long-term storage fees at the moment is £4.30 per cubic foot. So it's quite significantly higher than your 65 pence per cubic foot. It's a huge amount more. There is a minimum for that, just like we had the minimum uh, referral fee. The minimum is ten pence per unit. So you can quite see if you have a you know a thousand units that you haven't sold, this will crack up very very quickly. And again, you want to understand these. So if you if it's going to happen, you might want to just reduce the price of them and get rid of them. You might want to do a removal order to take them to your house and maybe sell them uh, fulfilled by merchant or sell them elsewhere. Uh, just be aware of long-term storage fees if you ever get into that that position. So other important fees, okay? There are some fees that aren't really going to be applicable for you when you first start. One that you can quite easily get, oh, I guess, taken advantage on from is the FBA label, FBA label service. So when you're creating your listing and you're creating your shipping plan, Amazon going to ask you, hey, do you want to use the Amazon um, FBA service or the label service? What this is, is on every uh, product, you're going to have a barcode, okay? Barcode just like this. That's actually not a barcode that you would get. But I haven't got any product boxes. But anyway, it's going to be your barcode. And if you want Amazon to do that for you, so if you don't know how to barcode things or you haven't arranged it with your supplier, there's going to be no barcode on your product. So when they re get received into Amazon, they need a barcode, okay? They need a barcode that Amazon can scan. So they'll be like, okay, we'll put them on the bar, we'll put the barcodes on there for you, but we're going to charge you 15 pence per unit. That's a lot of money for putting a sticker on a box, okay? It's a lot of money for it. Quite often your supplier will do it for free. And especially if you've done your packaging, you have custom packaging, just have the barcode on the packaging, right? So just it's printed and it will cost you zero extra. And obviously you time this by a thousand units, 2000 units, 5,000 units, whatever it may be, this adds up to a lot of money, which obviously you don't have to pay. So whenever you do that, just choose the Klein label service, okay? For a full list, do not see 
the link in the PDF references because <laughs> the PDF don't exist on this video. So here's a little debrief cycle so we know what we've been through. Uh, so by now you should be able to distinguish between the different seller fee types and the relevant costs. Why is it important? So you can fully understand your costs and calculate your profit margins. Okay, that would be where we complete and continue. So that's giving you a breakdown of the basically the most important fees that you're going to get when selling on Amazon. Make sure that you understand your fees. Don't just think that you know you have your FBA fee and that's it, or don't think you have your selling fee and that's it, or you have these uh, like label costs and that's it. Make sure you're fully aware of these. The links in the description will hold all of this information. If you ever get stuck, you can always just Google these things. It's very, very easy to find this information out and Amazon make it very, very clear and understandable as well. If you have got any questions about anything that I mentioned in this video, then please feel free to leave a comment down below. If you have enjoyed it and you found it valuable, I'd love it if you smash the like button and subscribe with those little notifications turned on. And remember, you're just one product away. Bye-bye.